There is a chowder that is the ultimate comfort food, a family classic, the corn chowder. This basic recipe starts off with corn as the main ingredient, and I'll add my twists on this dish to give you a hearty and flavorful main dish that we're going to start cooking right now. If you like this video, please don't forget to click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like more of these, please subscribe. I post new recipes every Sunday, and I welcome your comments. Everyone is on a budget when it comes to grocery shopping. How do we make our dollar go further? Can we multitask with our meals? Today, I'll make an inexpensive corn chowder that is packed full of flavor. Recipes for corn chowder date back to 1884, and in the fall, you can use fresh corn to capture the flavor of the season. However, today in the early spring, I'll show you how to use quality frozen corn to make this classic. Want to know how we do it? Keep watching. Here's what we'll need. One half bag of quality frozen peaches and cream corn. One can of creamed corn. Two kilograms of potatoes. Two stalks of celery. Two diced shallots. 250 grams of diced, uncured pork belly. Two liters of chicken stock. Three tablespoons of butter. 500 milliliters of heavy cream, finely chopped green onions, and salt and pepper to taste. Now that we have everything ready, it's time to cook. As with every dish, we have to get our mise en place ready. Let's start with the shallots. You'll want a fine chop as to enable these shallots to infuse the dish with their mild flavor. Your celery should be about one quarter of an inch thick and also chopped and set aside with the shallots. Turn the celery over so that it lays flat and use your fingers to guide and push the celery towards your blade. You may have wondered why I put my knife on the cutting board with the edge pointing away. Well, the real simple reason is so I don't cut myself. Because you notice when I pick up stuff, sometimes I may go over to the bin with the knife blade pointing towards me, then I'm going to cut myself. This way I just move it out of the way, as you've seen a couple of times. First thing we're going to do is peel the potato. This time we want to be careful with the skin. Let's see if we can't get it all off in one piece. Into the bin. Around. 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 And there's our potato peeled. Once again, into the bin. Move our knife out of the way. You always want to have a flat surface to cut your potato off. So. And then we'll take our potato. When you're cutting your potatoes, you want to make sure that there is no green skin or bruised parts. As you can see by this potato, we've got lots of green skin. That's actually a toxin called solanine. But once cut away from your potato, it's fine. I'll just make a thin cut here and you can see the green all around the edges. My pork belly to serve two purposes. First, I want some crispy bits for the final plating and second, I'll use some of the fat to saute the corn. What we want to do for this, very carefully, quarter inch pieces. So we have our pork belly in quarter inch pieces. I'm just gonna chop it up. Better. Just make sure that we have quarter inch pieces all the way around. This is going to puff up, it's going to get crispy, and a lot of the fat is going to render it. Now that we have our pork belly chopped up, these are called a couple of things. In the US, they're called cracklins. And in Newfoundland, Canada, they're called scrunchins. Whatever you call them, they're absolutely delicious and great little bits. We'll fry those up in just a moment. For our garnish, we'll want finely chopped green onions. You can also use chives. One of my little 
milk tricks is the creamed corn. Because to make creamed corn, it's a lot of work. But you can pick it up at the grocery store at a very reasonable price. Sometimes you can buy six or seven cans of creamed corn for a dollar. Now let's get things cooking. On your burner, you want a medium high heat to render down your pork belly. Keep a close eye on this to make sure the pork fat doesn't splatter and your scrunchions don't burn. When these are rendered down, remove the scrunchions to a paper towel and drain the fat into a heat proof container. I usually use a Pyrex measuring cup. Wipe your pan clean to make sure there's no drips on the outside and put back on the heat. Add about three tablespoons of pork fat, then your shallots. We'll season and sweat these for about three minutes until the shallots are translucent. One of my twists is to use pork fat, and the other twist, to enhance the flavor of the corn chowder, is to add frozen corn to the frying pan. I'll saute the corn until it's thawed and a couple of pieces start to caramelize, about three to five minutes. Don't forget to season your dish in layers. When that's done, remove the heat and I'll start the chowder. Put your pot on a medium-high heat and add the low-sodium chicken stock. Bring this up to a boil and then reduce heat to medium or medium-low depending on your stove. We just want a low boil. Add your celery, potatoes, creamed corn, sautéed corn and shallots. Let this slow boil on the stove for about 30 minutes. Check your potatoes, are they still holding their shape? And are they tender? Perfect. Now reduce heat a little more, just under boiling, and add your cream and butter. Once the butter is melted, taste and season. After you add your butter and your cream, you want to turn the heat down, just below boiling, so that everything will meld together. Let this sit, and you're good to go for supper, probably 20 or 30 minutes. Have some homemade rolls ready to go. Ladle your soup in the bowl, add some fresh ground pepper, a few scrunchions, and onions. And there is a classic dish of corn chowder. You can of course get inventive and add some chicken, shrimp, or fish, but that would be my other videos on classic seafood chowder. If you like this recipe, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to see a particular recipe or topic, please leave me a comment. Don't forget to subscribe, I'll be putting new content on this site every Sunday. And if you want more information, you can head over to the personalchef.blog where you can print the recipes presented here and I add new content every other day. Thank you for watching and I look forward to helping you eat healthier, shop smarter and cook better. Take two.